Welcome to course three, unit five. In the previous units, we went over the stages of development of an international standard. In this unit, we will look at how published standards are maintained and kept up to date. You may want to look back at course two to remind yourself who develops international standards. ISO standards respond to a need, but needs can change. So that need must be assessed over time to ensure that ISO standards all remain relevant. So how do we ensure this? If a standard needs updating, we can publish a revision or a minor revision. A minor revision does not impact the technical content and it goes through a much quicker publication procedure. Alternatively, if just a small part of the technical content needs updating, we can publish an amendment. A corrected version is only to correct errors or ambiguities that were not spotted before publication. So this does not really apply to keeping the document up to date. Even if no updates have been identified, all documents are subject to systematic review, which we will look at in more detail a bit later. So first, let's look at revisions and minor revisions. A revision is initiated for an update or a change to the technical content of an existing standard. If the scope is unchanged, it can be initiated by a simple resolution rather than going through a new work item proposal. Other than that, it will follow the same development procedure as we've covered in the first four units of this course. A minor revision is only for editorial changes, which must be briefly described in the forward. It cannot impact the technical content. The procedure is greatly simplified. It goes straight to the approval stage. The secretary of the committee can access the revisable files of the existing standards so that they can update the draft and submit it to ISO Central Secretariat. Amendments are used for changing or making additions to the technical content of published standards. They can be initiated by a committee resolution as long as there is no change to the scope of the document. Like a revision, the development procedure is the same as for a standard. But you can't keep amending standards forever. Amendments are published as separate documents to be used alongside the existing parent standard. So any more than two amendments would make the original document quite hard to use. If you have a document that needs to be amended a third time, then you would instead initiate a revision. Finally, there is a tool that ensures that all international standards remain relevant, the systematic review. This happens automatically five years after publication and the review period lasts for 20 weeks. The result is decided by a simple majority of the P members. They can choose whether they think the standard should be confirmed, meaning it will remain available and unchanged for another five years. The second option is to revise the standard, which can be initiated without the need for a new work item proposal. Or finally, if the standard is not used in five countries or more, it is not deemed to be globally relevant, so they can vote for withdrawal. This shows the importance of making sure that standards remain relevant to their market. Based on the results of the systematic review ballot, the committee secretary proposes the action to take, that is to confirm, revise or withdraw.